planners and bullet journals, art journals, art projects, organized planner sheets. Well, hello, planner babes, and welcome to Organized Planner Chic. I'm Lucinda, and if you haven't subscribed already, please do so and select the bell for notifications. Well, first, I want to thank all my awesome Patreon members who help make it possible to create videos like this. Well, thank you guys so much. And if you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, just go to patreon.com slash organized planner chic. Okay, you guys, this is part two of the first planner DIY for our spring series. And I'm showing you another part of my garden. And so right here, I just took some bell pepper seeds from, you know, when you buy bell pepper at the grocery store and I saved them, I planted them and they're growing, yay. And right here in my back patio as well, you saw there on the right and here on the left of these pretty flowers are some boxwood plants that I just haven't put in the ground yet I've had them for months and so we're hoping to put them in the ground in the spring and then my husband takes care of those pretty flowers right there and here are a couple here in the front I've got a fern there on the left and a spider plant on the right my spider plant like completely went away like it was dead because of the hot, hot summer, and then it just revived itself, awesome. So the way I normally take care of my plants is I feed them with water from vegetable clippings that I've soaked, and then I just use that liquid to feed my plants, like from bananas, bell peppers, kale, what have you, and then I water them, of course, and then I spritz most of them. So these are the outdoor ones that I'm sharing this time. And then, as always, the second time in this series, I wanna share with you the company that is sponsoring this series for spring and it is Emerging Green and they were awesome enough to bless me with these awesome green clogs for the garden. I love them so much you guys. They are very comfortable and of course they're awesome and green and I just wear them whenever I go out on the back patio to take care of my herb garden which I shared in my previous video so be sure and check that out and in the front and so here I'm going to put across the screen how you can get a discount on these and how you can get them um, through the end of June all right so let's go ahead and get in the second part or part two of the first DIY so in the first video we put together this whole cover and now here on the inside we are going to be adding some things so there you see on the left and the right we have pockets that are about three inches in width on each side and now we're just going to add some additional pockets on top of those pockets like you traditionally see in a planner when you buy it in the store now I made some mistakes y'all <laughs> in this process and I will point them out to you and tell you what would have been better to do. So yeah, but I'll tell you that as we go along. So I'm just using another piece of the paper bag that I used to make the cover in the previous video and I just measured it to be about an additional inch wider than the three pockets. So it's about four inches three inch pocket sorry it's about four inches after I added another inch and then one side is going to be a little bit shorter in terms of the pockets that I add because we're going to go up to the pin loops that we made in the previous video and what I'm doing right here is I am just creating a seam all the way around and that's going to make everything look really neat and clean when it's all said and done and it's also going to allow me to match up the width perfectly for everything for this pot these pockets that are going on top so we're going to put a seam on both sides and a seam at the top and the bottom and you know you just kind of have to play around with the paper sometimes sometimes it'll seem like oh I just need to fold this part about a quarter of an inch and then you go and you line it up and it turns out it's a little too wide or a little too narrow and thank goodness it's just paper because then you can just keep adjusting it and so I'm just sped this part up as I kept adjusting and folding and checking to see to make sure it wasn't too wide or wasn't too tall and so I just did that on both sides and then I used my bone folder just to really smooth them out and like I said in the previous video, you don't have to have a bone folder. I happen to have multiple of those, but you don't have to. You can use pencil, multiple pencils. You can use the back of a pair of scissors. You can even use the handle part of a butter knife. 
just to smooth that stuff out really good. Now, if you want a pocket that really has a lot of depth to it, where you can put a lot in there, then you don't have to take these folded parts like I'm doing. You can just glue or lose glue, glue or permanent double-sided tape, which we're gonna use in a little bit to put your pockets down. But I felt like I wanted it to be flatter because I feel like the deeper the pocket, the more stuff I'm gonna to try to cram in there. But you can do it that other way, absolutely. So I'm just using masking tape that I got from Dollar Tree. I love their masking tape. I love it because it's wider to me than other masking tape and it's lighter and it just, I don't know, I just like it. <laughs> so I'm just taping down those those folds and again you don't have to, if you were going to use those folds to stay open to help um, make your pocket deeper than the top fold you would tape that down so that your paper or whatever you stick in there doesn't get caught. Now this part is my first mistake which I really don't know what was happening in my mind <laughs> but I did not intend to glue down the whole bottom layer pocket. What was happening? You know I have to say sometimes my mind isn't a hundred percent on what it is that I'm doing whenever I am crafting but Thank goodness this is just for me and not for someone that I was giving as a gift and not a product that I was selling. So you would not do that. <laughs> I just wanted to show you how this turned out the way that it did. What you would do, like I will do in the rest of the video, is use some permanent double-sided tape, which I always use the Dollar Tree kind, and you would just put that on the left, the right, and the bottom of the paper. Another thing also, which I'm going to touch on again later, is ideally you would paint the pockets first and not put them down and then have to paint around them and worry about paint sticking and closing up your pocket with paint and all that good stuff. But again, my mind wasn't 100% <laughs> on what I was doing. I may have been daydreaming or concerned about something. Who knows? Tell me if you ever do that when you're crafting, if you're ever like, Oh my goodness, why did I do that? I didn't intend to do that. <laughs> so yeah, so now I'm just marking and cutting out the paper for the additional pockets. So it did work out where I am going to have multiple pockets, but I should have had at least one more on each side, but I wasn't paying attention. Okay, so now I'm just lining this up and kind of looking to see about how far down I want this next pocket to be. And since I accidentally totally glued down my first pocket, then I was wanting to make sure I had room where whatever I put in this pocket that I'm doing right now, that I can stick something in that can go above my pin loop, say, perhaps, because I wanted to kind of maximize the space for decorating with what I'm going to put in the pockets, yeah. So then, yeah, you just wanna do the same thing of folding and checking to make sure you're not going to be wider. Ideally, instead of just doing a little tick mark, you could take your ruler and mark the entire length of where you want to fold which is just better than what I was doing I was just doing a little tick mark and then folding it in because then you know that your fold is pretty much where you need it to be but if you don't even when you do draw a mark sometimes it's not exactly the way you want you just keep messing with the paper until you get it to be the right width where it matches up really well on the left and the right again as always it does not have to be perfect but you don't want it to look too crazy right <laughs> so of course i'm using my bone folder to smooth out the sides and checking and then folding down the top and the bottom also don't worry about your folds being exactly the same at the top and the bottom in terms of when it's upside down, like the way we're facing right now. It could be a little longer on one and the other. What matters is whether or not it matches up on this outside part that we're looking at right now. So yeah, so now I just need to fold up the bottom part and make sure that that fits and that it's pretty straight because otherwise it can look really catty cornered. And again, not perfect. We just don't want it to look crazy, crazy. <laughs> okay. So then I'm just checking to make sure and adjusting where it looks a little crooked. And then, yeah, we're done with that part. And of course, I did the same thing on the other side. And then we have all of my pieces. Then after we tape all of the bottom part down, if you're doing like I did, if you're not, if you want to 
deeper pocket, then of course you're only going to take down that top fold. Then after that we're using the double permanent double sided tape. So this is what I should have done on the layer that's already down there. <laughs> is I should have just put, I should have taped it closed like I did and then just use the double sided, permanent double sided tape to do the left, the right, and the bottom for the pocket. Now, and if you have the puffy pocket you will do that on the folds. Um, on the, yeah, on the edge of the folds. The top edge of the folds if that makes sense. And then, um, and then we're just going to take off the double sided tape. Now, ideally you would have one eighth of an inch double sided tape, which Dollar Tree does not have. Dollar Tree just has the one fourth of an inch. But with one eighth of an inch, then you'd have more space in the pocket that's not taken up by the tape. But I didn't have that. I just used what I have. When I used to sell products on Etsy, then I always used one eighth because it gave it a wider pocket. So yeah, I'm just lining that up. And then I've got my pocket. Again, you would paint first. <laughs> I did not paint first. It just makes it so much easier later if you paint everything first, but I didn't. So I'm just using my bone folder and checking. Looking at my, and I'm going to stick my bone folder in there so you can kind of see how wide the pocket is. Yeah, so it goes from there to there. So it's a good width, but it would have been even more if I had one eighth. And so, of course, I'm just speeding this up because I'm doing that same practice for all of the pockets here on our DIY paper bag traveler's notebook. Okay, so yeah, now I have all of my pockets on there all of them just smooth down and now we're gonna paint so again normally you would paint all these first but because I didn't I have to be all careful to make sure that I don't make my pockets stick together <laughs> so I wind up doing just two coats overall I believe but then I had to do a little bit more of a third coat um, in certain areas and you'll see here in a second why so now I'm just painting around the edges because again I didn't paint the, the pieces separately first and making sure that everything is. so this is what I did that you also don't want to do but if you paint first you don't even have to worry about this so I just wanted to make sure that my pockets didn't stick and I thought I'll just stick something in there just for a little bit and so that the bone folders don't stick to what's underneath and then I'll you know double check make sure it doesn't stick after that I take them out but I let left them in there too long I really didn't even need to do that <laughs> all I needed to do was just stick my finger or even a um, nail file in there every couple of minutes to make sure it wasn't sticking bit you know and but I used the ball folders for some reason <laughs> and so they stuck at the bottom pretty quickly but that's okay. Now sticking the ruler and the, and the scissors in here is a good idea um, because there's no paint underneath there. So, or there's no wet paint rather underneath there. So I didn't have to worry about the scissors and the ruler, the bottom of them sticking to anything. So you can kind of see, I'm not sure if you guys can on the screen, but there's a couple of places where the paint came off where the bone folders were. So I had to touch those up. So this last coat, I'm using a smaller brush, which is um, it, the smaller than the big one that I use for the main coat, and which is a Dollar Tree brush, which I think their crafting brushes are really good. So yeah, so now all of the layers are on there. And I don't think I explained, explained earlier why the elastics are tied up but that was because I'm going to be putting some Mod Podge on here and I didn't want to have to take the elastic all out. So I know I did a lot of really lazy stuff in this project. So this pin right here is from Dollar Tree. It is for painting on glass and ceramics and it's the perfect color and I hadn't used it yet so I thought I would. So I did go back over maybe three times the lines um, so that they would show up a little bit better and the reason why I'm doing this is because normally when you have pockets in a planner like this they're stitched and you can see the stitching so you know where the pocket begins because everything's the same color but since this isn't stitched and um, it's all the same color and I can't you know necessarily tell I mean I can I guess but as I thought I would just do that so I did so now I'm taking some Mod Podge. I'm using the matte kind.
design that I already had so it won't be as glossy as the outside which is totally fine and so I am just putting that and trying to be careful not to stick so I didn't stick anything in between there this time I just checked make sure I didn't go too far with the glue or wherever the glue spread that I kind of wiped it and yeah that's all I had to do before duh and again normally you would paint all your pieces first and not have that issue so now I'm just putting all of the Mod Podge all around everything so they all have the same finish and everything is protected with this coat of glue and so now we're going to decorate the pocket so I'm just going to put this uh, notebook that I designed this all specifically for which again this is by Emerging Green and I shared that in a previous video and, and gave one away and so here I'm just using some uh, not scraps but pieces of greeting cards so this one was a card one of my friends gave me and I'm just going to cut up to the flowers and then just kind of fussy cut around it to have a tall piece that kind of goes up above that that pocket that I glued down in the beginning and I think it's going to look really cute and especially with these little handles that I'm making throughout the rest of this video it makes sure that when I'm tucking in there it goes all the way down that it doesn't slip like it stays in the position that I want it to and it's not hidden I hope that makes sense you know sometimes you put stuff in planners pockets and maybe it drops down because it's not that tall but you want it to be visible well this way I can make sure it's visible so I'm putting a Dollar Tree sticker on there right there the little little gardening tool and now I'm just cutting off the mounted what do you call it mounted sticker that's in between these Dollar Tree stickers that I got you know it's got the sticker and then it's got a little piece of mounting tape and another sticker on top of it well I'm just cutting that out and then I'm gluing the top piece on there the reason why is because the little mounting pieces make it too thick in my planner especially with all the other stuff that's going in there but I do like that it adds depth with there being two pieces and so now what I'm doing is just gluing that to a piece of cardboard which is the cardboard that the sticker sheet was in it was right behind the sticker sheet and the plastic from Dollar Tree and so I'm just kind of looking to see how wide I need the white part that's gonna go in there to make sure it's positioned the way that I want it to be in the pocket and then I'm gonna just cut that out so this time I started cutting it out just cutting around it with my tiny Dollar Tree stickers but I think it's easier to cut around with the bigger stick scissors first and then use the Dollar Tree scissors to cut all the little fine details with and so now I'm just cutting all the little fine details out of there now if you don't have little scissors like this you can of course use your exacto knife with your cutting mat to cut that but I really like these little scissors and sometimes it might be a hard to get in the most the tightest little spaces and then you can use your exacto knife but I just cut around that I don't worry about it so that one's all done and it is a little bit shorter than what I wanted so I just pulled it up a little bit and then I'm just going to do that with a few more pieces so yeah and that same cardboard that was behind the stickers and this is the same sticker set that I got this little little um, plant with flowers and look at that see it's sticking up right above the pin loop and I think that looks really good and so now we are going to make some clear pockets to sit on top there on the very bottom where all that green is now I've made these before and I normally use well it depends but most of the time what I use is an old uh, sheet protector because you know over time maybe the holes that that go on the binder they get worn out and so I would use those because they have a lot of space whenever you tuck stuff in there you can have a, a deep or a wide I don't know do I want to say deep pocket like you can fit more in there is what I'm saying but what I'm sticking in these pockets I don't need it to be that way so I'm just using the plastic that the that was covering the stickers that we were just using and so what I decided to do is just make the top layer of it because you know there's two layers just take the top layer and use my corner rounder on that 
to make it kind of an open pocket at the top and I'm just cutting right here to make sure I have a straight pocket because then it'll look crazy and so here I'm using my my corner rounder I didn't press down hard enough the first time that I did it and so I had to cut around that with my tiny scissors and I probably spent too much time trying to make this little area a little too perfect but that's okay <laughs> and so now I am just adding um, the Dollar Tree double-sided tape all around the back layer and then of course we'll just peel that off and then position it as straight as we can and put that over the green right there and then I've got a little clear open pocket and I was able to reuse some packaging I always save my plastic packaging for different projects so that you know this kind of plastic doesn't get recycled and so I just want to do what I can to help be as green as I can for the planet and so then here we have another one on the other side and I just did everything the same way and I'm just rubbing now you don't really need to rub this with your bone folder because this permanent double-sided tape is seriously permanent <laughs> but now these are the other pieces that I already cut out I didn't put little white handles or stems on these because they didn't need it and it's perfect I think it looks so good and so now I'm just gonna go ahead and set it up as a traveler's notebook for you guys this time in part two just so you can see how it looks and how it's perfect it's an a5 what I mean by perfect is the perfect size I know my projects aren't perfect, but the size is perfect for an A5 traveler's notebook or for an A5 spiral bound notebook, which is what we started off with. And these notebooks are always available at Marshalls and TJ Maxx and the 99 cent store. So the ice cream ones that you see, the ice cream and the popsicle ones, I got those at the 99 cent store. And I think they were, I can't remember if those were 99 cents individually or not or if they were like two or three in a pack. But then the other two that you see, the one on the front that says my goals and this one with the dots, they were definitely in sets of two or three for like, I think they were sets of three for like $4.99 each at TJ Maxx. Yeah, and so everything fits in there really nicely. I'm loving it, y'all. So we're gonna put the pins and the pin loops and then we are good to go. And as I continue to show you guys how this looks, I want to thank you so much for watching today and I hope you watch part one if you haven't check it out and thank you if you did thank you for all of your support if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and comment and share it really helps my channel a lot and thank you so much for supporting my channel and if you're new thank you for watching this all the way to the end you guys are awesome if you haven't checked me out on Instagram check me out there at organized planner chic I also have two Facebook groups the one for anyone around the world is called organized planner chic crew and there we do giveaways and we'll be doing one at the end of this month and we try to stay in touch just about every day with all different types of posts and then the local group is called Phoenix Planner Friends for Christ. So if you live in the Phoenix Metro, check us out there. And then also, if you are interested in supporting me on Patreon, just go to patreon.com slash organized planner chic. And until next time, everyone, happy planning.